Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindi, and welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22. Do not adjust your television set or your computer monitor. This is indeed Monday, and you are indeed getting the Pittsburgh Pirates series. As I said at the end of last Monday's episode, uh, the glitch that keeps demoting me to AAA is getting really obnoxious, and I don't have a fix for it yet. Um, OOTP says it is on their list of things that they want to fix. I'm not the only person who had the problem, apparently. Um, but they're not here yet. And because they're not here yet, we're going to go ahead and double up on the Pirate series until they do get it fixed. For those of you that were hoping for this War of Mine, um, we're going to be starting a new Stellaris series uh, on the 27th? That sounds right. Yes, the 27th. Um, when that series is done, I'm 100% committing right now to do this War of Mine. Um, so rest assured that things will be happening. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so, last episode, we went ahead and made some changes in the offseason. Uh, relatively minor ones for the most part. Uh, we did acquire a new catcher and one Austin Hedges. Uh, we acquired, uh, apparently friend of the channel, Edwin Diaz, because I can't do a series without him, allegedly. I'm wondering if there's something kind of funky about war as it's being calculated for relievers. I would still consider this to be about a replacement level season, but maybe not. Um, a lot of our changes this offseason were kind of under the hood changes. Or changes that are just intended to be short-term fixes for long-term issues. Um, the big money, so to speak, was Austin Hedges. Uh, with Hedges' competition to eventually be Andy Rodriguez. Um, who's actually quite close to being Major League ready. I just want to see him excel um offensively at either double a or triple a or probably both this season if he can be an elite defensive catcher and he's maybe not elite but he's definitely better than average but maintain a good contact and good play discipline we're talking a leadoff hitter as catcher and i think that's always exciting and he's also very very young too um, other than Edwin Diaz, we made a couple of Rule 5 picks to restore the bullpen. And I believe we also have a pair of interesting players that I claimed on the waiver wire. Yeah, we've got Joey Lucchese as a possible starter and Jorge Mateo as a useful, um, as a useful backup. Because right now, if we take a look at our lineups and depth charts, um, we're really stretching uh, Cole Tucker. And that's actually why I think I have one opening on the roster. It's for Mateo. It's not for the starter. If we can get the starter just so I can let Priester pitch an entire season in AAA, I would be over the moon. But if we don't, we don't. But uh, one thing that I was thinking about before I, I loaded up today is how young this team is. The oldest player is 32, and he's the backup catcher. Um, and it's only going to get younger. I mean, there are a ton of really talented players here who are just going to, to be critical to our success. Um, and we have some reinforcements coming up in the, in the, in the roster. Our next big issue is what to do about second base. And we're going to let this play out over the course of the season. I like Kevin Newman a lot, but I'm also concerned that he's already peaked. Because his skill set is very, very contact dependent. It's extremely contact dependent. And for some players, that's, like, I don't want to say Ichiro. He's kind of the stereotypical one when you think about contact-dependent hitters, but he's actually much more, 
an all-around hitter with a crazy good contact tool. But there's only one Ichiro, and I just don't see Kevin Newman filling that role. I don't think he's good enough with the bat consistently to deserve a giant contract. Um, now, he wants $8.5 million. That's certainly not a giant contract. Um, and the problem is, is that we don't have a ton, we have a ton of mid-range second base prospects with Nick Gonzalez maybe being the best of the bunch. But I don't really see the next great second baseman here. Uh, why is Gonzalez in double A? He should be in triple A. He did fine in triple A last season. Uh, all right, clearly I need to take control of his development because the AI doesn't know what it's doing. Double A, please. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to see what we can do about some of our, our mid-range prospects. Uh, Blaze Jordan was a sneaky good under-the-radar acquisition. Um, now he's toolsy as fuck, and if he doesn't maximize his tools, he might end up being a bust. But I also gave up, uh, Tanner Rainey, a bullpen guy for that. And if there's something that just doesn't seem to change about OTP, it's that teams get hard-ons for certain relief pitchers. And that is always a weakness you can exploit. I don't know why the AI is obsessed with getting these. Uh, Tanner Rainey is a great reliever. I don't want to. I don't want to discourage you from thinking that. But he's also just a reliever. And that's the truth. He's just a reliever. And spending huge percentages of your payroll or uh, prospects to get a reliever almost always bites you in the ass. Something that these Boston Red Sox would know very well when they traded Larry Anderson or... No, they traded Jeff Bagwell to the Houston Astros for Larry Anderson. Oops. Ah, uh, well... Um, okay, it's Leover. I keep thinking that's also like Yover, like those are both L's, but no, it's a, it's an L and an I. I have very high expectations for Mr. Piguero here. He is an outstanding all-around hitter that happens to play shortstop relatively well. And if that means down the line he gets moved, like maybe the future is him at second and Noah Smith at short. Maybe that's the future that we're waiting on. Um, Mr. Smith here is very, very raw, though, and he's a long way away from the majors. Um, okay, I definitely want him in high A, but Blaze Jordan is probably going to have a very quick path to advancement. All right, friends, I think it's time to stop the stalling and to start playing <laughs> Ken Brian Hayes uh start playing some baseball and I acquired both of my players apparently Jorge Mateo is a bit of a jerk that's fine Jorge Mateo is not here to be a megastar. Jorge Mateo is here to ensure that we have competent backups at second and short. Also, dude, I really need you to stop with the whole, oh no, you're placing a shortstop that's not an elite defender. I'd better bench him every single day. No. Uh, bench coach, get fucked. I don't want Steven Alameus playing every day. 
I think he's a wonderful asset for the organization, and I like him. But if you think I'm going to let him be a starting shortstop on a team with a much better hitter, I'm I'm not doing that. Not at all. Uh, all right, Lucchese. Again, once again, the game is like, oh, he should be a reliever. Um, and maybe he should be, but that's not what he's here for. He is here to take some of the pressure off of Quinn Priester as a starting pitcher. <clears throat> a nice opening day start, even if it did result in a loss. I appreciate your hard work. And I've also got some other people on waivers. We're going to send everyone that we can down to the minors. Wow, really? You're all telling me no. Oh, no. I just, oh, I must not have clicked all the buttons. Okay, Garrett Richards is what I was afraid of. Um... You know what? Jordan Guerrero, I'm going to send you to the minors. I'm going to have Garrett Richards be a long man. This may seem like me being cheap. I just don't want to piss away. Plus, this means I can save you as middle relief. I just don't want to piss away a million dollars on a player that isn't going to be like the reason we win the World Series or anything. But still has something left to offer. And I'm just not going to bring him back. Uh, I don't think he's that useful. So, onwards we go. Man, there's a brief moment when Austin Hedges was the best hitter in the National League. And it's gone. Hmm. Well... That is an issue. So, we've got a couple of options at this point to replace him. Really three options that I can see. Nick Gonzalez, Rodolfo Castro, and Yorner Fajardo. <clears throat> Castro is the best hitter of the bunch. And if we punch, if punch, if we push Alameus to being our starting second baseman and just have him as a great bench bat, that may be his best role. And I'm thinking that's what we'll probably do. Because I don't want, I want Nick Gonzalez playing every day and I'm not ready to start him yet in the majors. We're close. We're very, very close. But we're not there yet. So, Rodolfo Castro is going to be there. Uh, Alameas is going to start at second. He is certainly not hitting second. I guess Cole Tucker can hit second, just because someone has to. And a boop. And a boop. And then I'm going to let the league set up everything else. I think this is reasonable. And I think this is reasonable. Okay. Done. Mmm, fruit. Was I missing a couple of coaches now that I think about it? I'll wait until the month is over and then I'll take a look. Player development. Okay, that's encouraging. 
Austin Hedges randomly gets better, but it's still probably never going to hit that well. Mr. Piguero is improving his abilities quite nicely. Reynolds gets worse. Adolfo's power and I get better. Eddie Yeen just picked up some heat on his fastball. That's going to help him out. Game, I need you to stop. I need you to stop looking at this skill set and deciding this is a man that needs to be in relief. I will tell you, game, when I do not wish him to be a starting pitcher. Uh, any other changes here? T Tirso Ornelas is getting better defensively. He's still a long way away, though, from being a major league hitter. Nick Gonzalez is getting slightly better across the board. Okay. Nothing too exciting. Uh, offense looks solid. Rotation is not. Mitch Keller is having a real rough just start to his season. Pitching staff in general is really badly hemorrhaging. And it looks like the defense is hot garbage. Uh, if we take a look at defense, where are we falling flat? It's Peguero and it's Cole Tucker. Um, which is a little disconcerting. If Tucker is that bad as a left fielder, we're going to do this. I'm going to go boop. Uh, game, stop. Stop thinking that I need to bench someone frequently just because of defense. That's not appropriate. Here, you know, it's the same depth chart for both sides right like i'm not platooning anybody so i'm gonna go copy paste there we go and then i just need to fix this over here and over here and this is just because Cole Tucker is an elite right fielder, but he's not remotely an elite left fielder, whereas Adolfo's pretty much the same in either spot. So I'd, I'd rather make the most out of the roster by making that fairly minor change. Pitching staff, bro, I don't know what to do for you. I really don't. Um, I know what I was going to do. I was going to go pitching stats, and we're going to do... Oh, I can't edit columns here? That's lame. I mean, it looks like FIP is treating him, is doing him dirty, but it's also so few innings. It's 23 innings. I'm not really that fussed by it. So we're just going to see how you do with a bit more time. Um, I would like to swap this out for my top prospects, please. Because I think that's much more important to me. All right. Let us sim forward. And we lost Travis Swaggerty for a few weeks. All right. Um, so we have an interesting problem on our hands. Namely, I don't really have a center fielder. I have a couple players who are bad at center, but I don't have, like, a proper center fielder. 
Oh, Matthew Frazier. Nope. Like, Kanan Smith Jigba is my best outfielder, but he doesn't play center. And I don't think he'd be very good at center even if I asked him to play there. Can Ornelas play center? No, he really can't. I have a bunch of... So here we go. We have Lolo Sanchez. Who only play center, and that not terribly well. And I really don't want Gorski playing center every day. I need another center fielder. Poop. Where are you, center fielder of my dreams? I mean, I'm not going to play Cole Tucker in center. He struggled and left. I'm not going to give him an even harder job. Um, let's check the waiver wire, see if someone's trying to sneak through a center fielder. It's literally just pitchers at this point. Okay. So let's face facts before we get too deep into this strategic calculus. We can Brian Reynolds play center. You know what? Brian Reynolds can play center a little bit. And then I can promote uh, Mr. Smith. And I'm just going to have Brian Reynolds play center. Because I know he's a... Unless... No, Gorski's a 47. Yeah, Gorski, you can figure it out. And no game. Stop. Just stop. That has been a consistent issue for me. In almost literally every single edition of OTP is that the game thinks that defense should always outweigh offense. Like, I know I am deliberately weakening the team a tiny bit by not letting, say, Reynolds play left, but the only thing Reynolds does better than Adolfo is play left. Adolfo is a critical source of power for this team, and so we want him hitting home runs, which he can't do, if we have him benched, just because Brian Reynolds is a pretty left fielder. <clears throat> that is where we are right now. Let us go ahead and advance. Hey, apparently this is going to be the season where all of our center fielders die. Uh, that's That's fine. Hey, Sanchez. Oh, really? Yeah, really. I don't want to lose Mason Martin by punting him off the, the list. Hmm. I'm going to try to trade Chu for a center fielder. And I will check any box that I can find. I'm not looking for center field elite play. I'm looking for center field competent play. I mean, I'd like to have a younger player that's actually fairly decent at the position, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, nice try, Yankees. I'm not buying you out there. Ah, Jabe's out man. The man of outs. I, I like the cut of your jib, my friend. But honestly, Bubba Sterling is the better defender. He's more likely to have a successful career here. But he's the man of outs. And he's actually got a really decent offensive skill set. Like, I think he's the better outfielder. 
So I'm going to take the man of outs. Let's consummate the deal. No, Andrew Friedman. No. There will be no consummation here. You pervert. Eh. Yeah, I'm just going to pull this trigger. I'm not going to be super fancy about this. And I'm just going to immediately elevate you to the major leagues, Mr. Outman. And then we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Okay. Can we survive a month without losing a center fielder? Let's find out. I didn't realize Roger Clemens won an MVP. That's cool. I mean, you can tell me about some other fact. It doesn't have to just be about Roger Clemens. Oh, looks like we're about to lose Pedro Avila. Kevin Newman. Alameas is actually hitting okay. I'm going to let you rehab in the minors. And I'm going to be honest with you. You're a bit, you're, you're, you've kind of tanked a bit. What kind of injury was this again? It looks like it's really sapped a lot of your ability to hit for contact. What was your injury? It was a broken hand. I guess that makes sense. You, you kind of need that. All right, let us push forward. Oh, I did want to start thinking about our draft position. <clears throat> we pick 8th and 14th. And again, this is a very, very top-heavy draft. And I kind of get, I get the attraction behind constantly just kicking first round picks down the road. But I'm going to have to make the pick eventually. And I do have someone that favors ability. Now, if, if we took a look at OSA's version of this. OSA is very excited about a lot of players. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to try to balance those two views. Because Gakeler is an amazing scout. He's really, really good at his job. So we're going to see what he can do. Uh, but we're going to let OSA give us a bit more in his tools. And there goes Pedro Avila for the season. All right. Now the question is, do we bump up Patrick Murphy or Kevin or Garrett Richards? Or do we promote Quinn Priester? <clears throat> Has Priester made any great strides? No, because he is also hurt. That's terrible timing. Yeah, there he is. He strained his shoulder. So I'm forced to have, like, James Marvel as my starter? I'd rather give Patrick Murphy an audition as a starter. At least I would if he had a third pitch. And that's your issue. Because this changeup is so mediocre, that does place us in an uncomfortable situation. I think it is going to be James Marvel.
All right, let us advance to June. Patrick Murphy is improving a bit. Mitch Keller is getting worse. That's the wrong way, buddy. Luke and Baker's a little better. Rodolfo Castro is a tiny bit better. The out man is better at, at getting outs, I hope. He's gotten worse. Yeah, Jacob Wallace is very quickly forcing himself into consideration as a starter just because I'm running out of other options. Which is weird because he's got crappy stamina, but that may be where we are right now. If you were a decent catcher, I would actually promote you in a heartbeat. Either one of you. And you know what? I think I will promote Logan Brown. And Nick Gonzalez got worse. Okay. Can I trade Bruce Maxwell and get something decent in return? Any position, please. I want best player available. No. All right, then. Then I'm simply going to wave him and send him to the minors, and we're going to let Logan Brown be the backup catcher. Done. Um, right. I am not fine with this offer. Oh no, you don't. Okay. But I am up to I am willing to trade Brian Reynolds. I'm very willing to trade Brian Reynolds. I just don't think Caden Grandier is what I want for him. So let's shop him now. And see what manner of prospects are being offered to me. Ryan Nelson, potentially. Let me upgrade to include regulars, too. <clears throat> like, it isn't as though we can't use upgrades at the major league level, right? Now, that is fascinating. Ah. Arbitration. I would very much take Aaron Savali. We need rotation help. He's young. He's not going to break the bank like Bieber would. I think that might just be the best offer we're going to get. Max Kepler, meh. Ford Proctor, meh. Yeah, if Cleveland is desperate to get rid of one of their pitchers, I will happily take Savali. I think he's exactly the kind of starter that could thrive in Pittsburgh. I don't know if Shane Bieber is objectively the better pitcher, um, even if he's off to a slow start this season. 
but I'm not paying that much money. I'm just not. So yes, give me Savali, please. Easy, easy, easy choice. Marvel can go back to the miners. And now we have an ace-ish besides Keller. I mean, it's hard to really know what to expect from Mr. Savali, but he goes from being a small fish in a big pond to a pretty big fish in a very small pond. Like, he's instantly my best pitcher. Although Keller will certainly lap him at some point. Um... And he is, yes, he's arbitration eligible, but he's not asking for a ton of money. So that's exciting. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, bros. Andy Rodriguez is on my untouchable list. I'm hoping for big things from him. Blaze Jordan is on pace at 88 homers in IA. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, buddy. Just take it easy. I don't want you to hit too many homers. Uh, we're going to lose Swaggerty for a bit longer. That's fine. All right, Bruce Maxwell cleared waivers down to triple A with you. Why am I short a player? I traded Brian Reynolds and I didn't I didn't promote another outfielder. That's on me. Okay. No, that's that's reasonable. <clears throat> um, Frazier, I guess. Eh. Isn't Swaggerty back soon? I could call up Kevin Newman. Um, what do we do for this last opening on the roster? Do I just promote Frazier? Like, he's not the worst, right? And even if he's not in the majors for long, um, that's acceptable to me. No, no. Yeah. And then if starter tired. I know I'm kind of pushing people pretty hard right now, but I'm trying to feel the best lineup that we can, and I don't think the best lineup comes from having Adolfo take a day off very often. I mean, I quite literally want to run him into the ground and see what we have before he starts getting expensive. If that makes him a bit mercenary, I mean, that's what we have to do for this team to be successful. Is we have to be willing to push hard and see what we've actually got. Even if it means breaking a player. All right. Game, I always want both. 
<clears throat> so as we've gotten closer to the draft, we've developed a bit of a higher appreciation for some of the starting prospects. And if I'm honest with you folks, I'm kind of thinking we have to take a starter with at least one of our first round picks. Um, I just don't think there's another option. Zion Rose is overrated as shit. Like maybe in real life he's an amazing prospect, but I look at this I look at this skill set and I'm like this is fine if he works out, but he's garbage if he doesn't. This is way too big a risk uh for a first overall pick. And the upside's not big enough in my opinion. Like, give me some freaking Tyler Nesbitt. This is the good shit right here. And I don't have to be as picky about movement because we have Pittsburgh now and not Baltimore. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I think we're going to be able to snag at least one starter and then maybe just try to get the best player available. Um, and again, there's a certain level of if I keep kicking this can down the road, I'm eventually going to get an excellent player out of it. There's no way that the Orioles take Rose, I don't think. I think he falls to Cincinnati at number three. Which just increases the chances, unfortunately, that the good starters are going to fall to me. Oh, well. It be like that sometimes. Who did Baltimore not sign last season? Draft history. No, that's not what I want. I want ball. They didn't sign the first round pick. Thanks, buddy. You're not telling me who that first round pick was. You know what? I don't even care at this point. If we're not going to be helpful, then quit your complaining. But yeah, at a certain point, kicking this first base can, this first round draft pick can down the road might pay off. But I don't think that time is anytime soon, to be honest with you. Like, taking a look at this draft pool as we get more and more information. Ah, uh, here we go. 2024. Okay, top three. Rest of it is pretty middling. 2025. You don't even have that big, flashy player. Uh, and we don't know anything about 20. Oh, we do know about 2026. And it's an even worse season than any of the others so far. And of course, this is because they're all super young players. We don't actually know how good they're going to be. But what matters most is that it's not like the situation is going to get better, I don't think. And I think we have to take at least one of these first round picks and use it to sign somebody. And then hope that our development system can help them unlock hidden heights that they never knew about. Um, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. If they fall to us, I think this is probably our pick. I think it's going to be James Hayes. Uh, he's extremely raw. Extremely raw. Actually, I don't like Hayes that much now that I think about it. We'll have to think about it. Once we see who's available when we get to pick. But... There's just not a ton here that I can see that I definitely think is worth pursuing. I quite like Hunter Barco. I just... I don't see him falling to us unless teams are that desperate to not spend cash. So we have $15 million, and that may be my secret weapon in the draft, is that I've got probably more money to spend than a lot of other players. 
Uh, we're facing a pretty dangerous situation with one specific player, and that player is named Kevin Newman. Right now, he wants to get paid $8 million in arbitration, and he's not worth that. Like, his rehab stint, he can't hit. This was a highly contact-dependent second baseman that may have lost his ability to make contact. I do really like Kevin Newman as a player, but not if that's the price tag he wants. So I think we very strongly consider moving him. Um, anybody else here that I wouldn't mind locking down? Some people are going to get non-tendered. It's just what's going to happen. Yeah, that's fine. I am absolutely regretting paying Edwin Diaz as much as we did. Like, he's pitching okay. I'm not mad at him, but I do think that his money could be spent better elsewhere. Um, Let's see if Newman's arbitration demands start to drop. And if they do, we'll, we'll keep him around a bit longer, I think. But maybe not. All right, we have to make a decision on Newman. Right now, do we trade him now or do we promote him back to the major league roster? And I'm going to be honest with you. I know Olimaeus isn't the greatest player, but he's kind of done okay. And he's been... A really solid second baseman. And I mean, some of the lessers come off of Nick Gonzalez. It looks like he's maybe struggling a little bit offensively. But, I mean... Uh, no, don't injure Andy Rodriguez. I have a lot riding on him. Damn it, game. Um, look, I think we trade Newman. Like, this is a man that wants to get paid. And I don't begrudge him his desire to get paid. But I do begrudge I do begrudge him asking that amount of money of me. So we're gonna look at the very best possible prospects we could get for one Kevin Newman. It's exactly one decent player, a first baseman from the Mariners. He's a good first baseman. But I don't really need to stockpile first baseman, I don't think. Let's take a look at other regulars. Let's upgrade the search. Because remember, we are a team that has lots and lots of holes. And if we can fill them in creative and exciting ways... Uh, I guess I should not have asked that. Really, Boston? Wow, you're high. Yeah, I'd rather just get that first baseman and then flip him later on. Ooh, hang on. Adam Hill. This looks like a Pittsburgh Pirates starter to me if I've ever seen one. Cheap, very limited upside. And I agree with you. This is not going to be enough. This is just the starting point. Eh. I like Brady House, but I don't really have a spot for him right now. Can I 
get Noel V. Marte? No. Could I get your first round draft pick? No. No. Is there any upside to this trade? It's another relatively capable starting pitcher. Um, oh, you are the team that had the first baseman. Ben, I get where you're coming from. I truly do. I don't care whether you endorse it or not. I trust you. I like you. You're my boy. I am not listening to you in this particular argument. I need to keep the cash flowing. And I can't afford to overpay for a player who's quite clearly lost a step. Like, he's not even hitting 200 in the minor leagues. That's, that's not acceptable. Oh, um, I'm just going to designate him for assignment then. I'm going to trade him. It's just a question of to whom. No, do not put him on waivers because someone's going to claim him for free. Damn it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to send Castro back to the miners. And I'm just going to have Newman just ride the roster until I hear back from the Mariners about that trade. Done. Alright. Uh, I'm going to immediately put Castro back in the majors and... We're just going to do this. I'm not even going to argue with you anymore. I, I really don't care. If you want, heck, if you want Logan Brown to play over Hedges, I don't really care. Like, it's not like Hedges is setting the world on fire. Could I trade Hedges and get a decent return for him? I'm going to put Hedges on the block and I'm going to see what offers start to come in. Because there's bound to be somebody who desperately needs a defensive first catcher. And I've got enough in my minor league system that I could call him up. Uh, we can have Gorski back. Do I want Gorski back? I say yes. <clears throat> and I definitely don't mind if you want to be a bit aggressive about who does what here. Outman has turned into a nice little outfielder for us. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And we're back at full strength. Um, Jigba, you're really, you're really struggling. And I do think I want Swaggerty to start over Outman or Gorski. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're going to do that. I'm going to have... Oh, do you have a hole in your swing, Mr. Swaggerty? You don't like facing left-handed pitching. And I have... Um, I have Gorski. So 
So maybe we do this. And this. And that's very sensible. Yeah, I like it. Okay. International free agent signing begins. I will plunk down five million on the first interesting looking player. You can't even stop me. Damn, check out Cabrian Hayes being an MVP candidate. Oh my god, Swaggerty. Really? Bro. That's not nice of you. I just called you up. I'd rather have Frazier. And this is just because I still think he's got some ceiling left to him. And I don't want to ruin him. Um, and I think this has been kind of a lost year for him. So I definitely want him to get a chance to play every day in the minors and see what he can do. Um, sure. And I'll just reset the depth chart. Oh, uh, Outman. You're my new starting center fielder against left-handed pitching. Right-handed pitching, sorry. And that's mostly just because you're a really good hitter. And you're not the worst defender. That's kind of damning with faint praise, I know. But the more I can build center field into your toolkit, the more useful you're going to be to me in the future. Yeah, Swaggerty, I don't know what your issue is. All right, my duty is hit 20 home runs, uh, 25 home runs, and 173 at-bats. You are more than ready for promotion to double-A, I think. Let's press onward. I'm not getting a single offer for Austin Hedges. Our team just not that hard up for catchers. Okay. Any big player development use a mute news a little bit. I have some people making some minor changes one way or the other. Cabrian Hayes, stop being so awesome. You make the rest of my team look bad. I'm kidding. Please be as awesome as you'd like to be. I mean, Swaggerty's getting better. I guess that's something. Alman's getting worse at playing center. It's whatever. Garrett Kokis is starting to look like a pretty tasty dude. Player wise. Okay. Look at Hudson Head starting to really try to impress. I like you. Alright, I feel like I have to intervene here just because it seems like the AI is trapping him in high A, even though he er he proved last season he didn't need to play in high A again. He should have been prone to double A this season. Welcome to Altoona. Alright. Uh, are there any good international amateurs this season? There sure aren't. Although, Leo Avila is actually a really decent hitter. I will give you five million dollars. Uh, 
Uh, okay, it's coaching time. Hey, Noah Smith is a number nine prospect. Nice. Why is Jack Leiter not on the list? Because he's already in the majors. Okay. God, look at this loser. I'm so glad I didn't draft him. I am kidding, but... Wow, he has not developed the way he did for the Orioles. That's for darn sure. Okay. Oh, uh, what was I going to do? Coaching. Personnel. All the minor leaguers. Coaches get extensions. Okay, major league coaches. A team trainer, we can do better. I'm not going to bring you back. Everyone gets along really well together. So I think I'm going to keep third and first base coaches. I think they've both done an excellent job. Um, Oscar Marine, I, I really think we can get a better pitching coach. So I'm not going to bring you back. Um, what do we do about our bench coach? Ouch. He really doesn't get along well with pitchers at all, does he? As long as I get somebody else who works well with personable people, I can probably upgrade a bench coach too. Yeah, I think we make this the off-season of upgrading the coaching staff. I do quite like Ben Charrington, though. So I think I will give him an extension. But yeah, we're going to replace pitching coach, bench coach, and team trainer in the off-season, I believe. I think that's going to be an improvement all around. That seems good. Okie dokie. Okay, it's draft time. Right, I'm not even going to bother trying to decide who I'm going to pick. I'm going to wait and see who's available by the time I do pick. And boop. Okay. I did not expect that. Hmm. What is it about him that you love, Scout? Good feel for the strike zone. Everyday catcher. I did not expect him to fall to number eight. Here is the issue if we take him. 
I mean, he's 18. He's got the world on a string. He's exactly the kind of player that we should be thinking about. And honestly, the other starting pitchers are more or less the same, and I can grab them my second first-round pick. As much as I trashed Zion Rose earlier this episode, there is a certain amount of attraction to getting an elite-level talent, even if he doesn't work out. And he's only 18. His, his future is basically unlimited, and the only thing it would cost me is $7 million. And it's not like he'd be challenging for the major league job anytime soon. We could let him grow. We could let him experiment in the outfield if that's where he's a better fit. I think we do it. I think we take Zion Rose and we laugh all the way to the bank because... Yeah. All right. I'm going to focus on pitchers now. I'm not saying that players like Carter Young or Michael Brooks might not be interesting. I wonder if that's Michael Young's son. No idea. But we desperately need pitching talent injected into the equation here. Pete Hansen. Very good control. Good fastball curveball combination and a decent changeup. Pretty good stamina, but doesn't throw very hard. And our scout says he'll probably be the back of the rotation. That's certainly valuable, but it's maybe not what we're looking for. James Hayes. Here's your issue. If I knew this changeup might be major league quality one day, I would probably take you pretty quickly. And again, another back of the rotation lad. I like your pitch mix. And I think that's your greatest strength. You've got decent stamina. Your tools aren't the greatest. Good old Dan here says they're not even sure if how he's going to do. Carson Montgomery has an awful lot going for him except for this. Hmm. Then we have Nate Savino, who's a bit more meh. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. A guy like Montgomery, if he can throw strikes consistently could be a really solid starting pitcher. And his strikeout to walk ratio in the minor in, in college has actually been pretty solid. And this is also a guy who pitched for Florida State. So he didn't pitch for like a cow college. He pitched for a good school. And he did well in that good school. So Mr. Montgomery, I think you're my pick. All right, I'd like to grab one more starter to try to mitigate the risk. So it's going to be one of these three gentlemen. Um, I like this. This is a pretty decent combo. You did struggle your first year in college, but you bounced back to have two very solid seasons. Yeah, you improved across the board, and I like that. I like that you show significant improvement. Eddie Paik. 
a really nasty curveball, pretty good stuff, decent control, four pitch mix. He's a lefty that throws a screwball. Yeah, I think we're going to take Mr. Pake here. Or Pelk. Sorry. Plus, lefty throws a screwball is always interesting to me. All right. Uh, let us now look at best player available. What's left? Uh, we've got a bunch of interesting players. Mason Neville. You're pretty bog standard power and plate discipline um, package who really took well to his first year in college, but I don't think I want him. I think we can probably do better. Michael Brown, elite power and discipline. Played for an excellent college, but I'm also kind of filled to the brim with first base. First base is not an organizational weakness. In fact, let's take a super quick look here. Positional rankings. Yeah, we're one of the best in the majors in terms of uh, first base prospects. We really need pitchers uh, more than anything, but we could also use more outfielders and more second basemen. So I'm going to pass on Michael Brown. Michael Curiale is a pretty decent defender with a pretty mediocre bat. Uh, you've at least got really good plate discipline and probably enough contact to make that stick in the majors. And you do profile as a second baseman. Yeah, you'll be about a 250 hitter. But if he can do 250, 350, or he's got an on-base range of 350, and as long as he shows solid glove work at second... I think we're so hard up for second baseman that he might be my pick. Uh, Crampton is... Oh, no, Crampton is the one I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a bit closer to a sure thing offensively because of this gap power, which is definitely underrated. You've still got good discipline. You don't strike out as much. But Crampton's more advanced second baseman is the difference for me. TJ McKenzie is not a shortstop. Austin Reed? It if it comes down to Reed or Crampton, I think Crampton is the better choice just because his offensive skill set is like 5% better. But then again, Reed is an excellent defender. I think we take Reed. And if Crampton's still around, we'll take him too later on. Yeah, we're going to mitigate our risk and take both of them. Alright, you know what? If Mason Neville's going to keep falling, I think he's got enough of a ceiling that I'm willing to give him a try. Like he's too good not to be not to be taken at this point. Why do I know the name Drew Bowser? I don't know why. I watch a lot of baseball. At least I did. Maybe I don't watch as much as I used to. 
You know what, Sai Nielsen? I like you. I'm going to take you sight unseen because I trust my scout that much. And again, I just want more and more and more pitching. Into He's even a lefty. Done. Easy layup choice. I want Andrew Duncan pretty badly, actually. I'm I'm not convinced he'll ever be a great major leaguer, but he's super young. He's being chosen by one of the best baseball universities in the country. He's got ridiculous plate discipline. And he looks like a really great outfielder. So yes, Andrew Duncan, welcome to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Who else we got? We have Ariel Antigua. A very fine shortstop we can't hit. I'm okay with that. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna edge toward high school players just because I want them to have a chance to grow. Um and we're not like one or two players away from a championship. We're like ten players away from a championship. Jack Frank is an interesting hitter. He's not a center fielder. Uh, I'm okay with that. Let's uh, let's bring Jackie Boy over to Team Pittsburgh. You know what? 500 grand for a good defensive catcher who might be a decent hitter is a pretty darn good risk. Done. And then, Scouty McScoutface, I'm going to let you pick the rest of the draft for me. I am genuinely shocked that not that Zion Rose fell to the eighth overall pick. I genuinely thought he would get taken first over, maybe like third overall. And I know he is an extreme work in progress. Uh, no denying that. But yeah, all I need is one of these other players to make even a minor breakout, and we could get some tremendous value later on in the draft. Um, Mason Neville in the fourth round is a freaking steal. He just is. It is highway robbery to get a player with this kind of skill set that late in the draft. And all he has to do is improve the tiniest bit. And he's going to make this look like one of the best picks I've ever made. So, Mr. Rose, you want your $7 million. I'm going to give you $7 million. Carson Montgomery. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to have everyone their demands. I'm not going to nickel and dime rookies. It generally doesn't pay off. And when we already have a bunch of money that we're just sitting on, it's it would just be foolhardy to not spend the money that they want. I'll give you a signing bonus. Owen Egan, I'm not super enthused by you, but this is a measure of faith in my scout that I'm going to offer you that anyway. Without too much exaggeration, Zion Rose is probably... Ooh, nice. The biggest vote-getter in the major leagues. Neat. All right, who else from Pittsburgh made it? None of my pitchers. Not a shock. That's literally it. Just Cabrian Hayes. Well, you know what? We're a 42 and 47 team. I accept this. Look at the season he's having. My freaking word. What a guy. 
I bet we'll have a far. Uh, I bet we'll have several more people here. Noah Smith, and that's it. No, and Logan Reinhardt. Okay. How is your season going at High A? You know what? It's been going well, but I don't want to pressure you when you're still only 20. I'm probably just going to leave you there for the rest of the season and just let you keep working. I think that's fine. I'm super excited about that draft. And I didn't think I would be. But I think we've got a lot of players who at bare minimum are going to be mid-range starters at different positions. And at best, there could be an all-star or even a Hall of Famer somewhere hiding in, uh, in there. Once we get to the uh, trade deadline, I'm going to trade Austin Hedges. Like he's had a perfectly cromulent year. I just don't need him. And if I can turn that into... Oh, good. Here we go. Uh, Zion Rose, I am going to personally guide your development. And I do think that rookie ball is exactly the right place for you. I'm not going to be aggressive about you. I'm going to be, if anything, conservative. Brandon Lowe? Really? I guess Brandon Lowe's a bit more of a home run guy than I ever thought of him as. Like, I did not remember him being a big power guy for Tampa, but I guess he is. Okay, no big shocks here. All right, it's time to move Austin Hedges. Um, I think that is probably the most important thing we can do right now. Not because Austin Hedges is, like, critical, but just because I've already got Logan Brown and I've got other catchers waiting for a chance in the minors. Like Grant Koch. I think this would be a very interesting catching tandem, which will then let Andy Rodriguez work a bit lar harder in double-A. And what's going to happen is as soon as I promote Coke, I'm going to uh, promote Rodriguez to AAA. Let me set you up as that so that I can control your development. Okay, that's interesting. I had no idea how bad Luke and Baker was this season. Um, okay. Well, that's not ideal. I may want to grab a a cheap first baseman in the offseason. To transition us over to, like, Blaze Jordan or even Michael Toglia. Hell, Michael Toglia might be a better choice right now. Yeah, all you are is home run power. And you're not even accomplishing that regularly. Okay. So, two players I actually want to trade now. I want to trade Baker, but I want to trade Hedges more. So let's trade Hedges first. And I only want prospects. Nothing else. You know what? 
he's mediocrely interesting. Traded. Oh, I guess people really liked Austin Hedges. Hedges is 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 super leadership. Oh well. Uh, next up is Luke and Baker. Like I, <sighs> maybe I don't trade him. Maybe I just send him to the minors. He never did get a lot of time in our AAA system. I'm gonna demote you, and I'm gonna promote uh, Michael Toglia. Ah, you're very, very right. I do need to clear up some spot. Some spot. Uh, Ji Huan Bei is still an interesting player to me. Even if he's buried in the minors, and I don't want to give him up yet. Can I get anyone to give me something for Garrett Richards? I'm sure the answer to this question is probably no. They're going to laugh their asses off at the idea. How about James Marvel? Yeah, I'm not getting either of those. Garrett Richards, you have played baseball. And I'm going to waive you so that I can promote Michael Toglia. All right. Now the question is who's the starting catcher between Coke and, and Brown? Brown is by far the better defender. It's like, there's no disputing that. However, Coke is definitely the better hitter. That said, Brown's got major league experience now, even if it's not very much. Like, it's not a huge amount, right? But I think it's enough that he deserves to be the starter for now. But if they want to be real happy about who plays which positions... Uh, I am I'm totally on board for that. And then I'm gonna copy the lineup after I no sorry, I'm gonna generate the depth chart. I think that's reasonable. You know what? I think that's an extremely reasonable idea is getting Coke to play um every other day. Or a couple times a week. I think Toglia is going to be a lot better than this. I'm just trying to keep him low in the lineup to let him just build up. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking good things of him. All right, friends. Uh, with that said, let's go to roster expansion. Player development, Garrett Richards is even worse. Mitch Keller is getting better. Diaz is better. Coke and Brown are about the same. Toglia is about the same. Jacob Wallace. Quinn Priester is actually slipping a tiny bit, but it looks like that's actually because for a brief moment in time, he looked like ultra amazing. Once rosters expand, I think what we're going to do is I think we're going to go to a six-man rotation or something, and then Priester is definitely going to be... I'm just going to cut you, Garrett Richards. Like, I don't even care. It's not worth keeping you for 500 grand. Um, I do need to call up a reliever, and that's going to be Eddie Yeen. 
<clears throat> like a true quality bullpen. God damn it, I'm really full again. I really am full again. Uh, Lolo Sanchez, you're being waved. Yeah, let's see what you can do in the bullpen. And then uh once the forty man's once the forty man rosters expand or not forty man rosters, you know what I meant. Uh I'm going to uh promote Priester and let him start. Uh, Stephen Brault, I appreciate your concern, and I'm here to kindly tell you to fuck off. So, yeah. Uh, nobody claimed him. That's excellent news. We are shockingly close in a lot of ways to being a playoff team. I don't know you're like what? But it's true. We're we're getting to the point where what we need is we need one or two really great players to kind of set the tone. Uh but we're getting a really good Medium level roster. Nice work, Mr. Toglia. Any big changes here? Hey, Logan Brown is really taking to being starting catcher quite nicely. I like that. All right, uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to promote Priester. And Mr. Priester is going to be... Probably the sixth man in a six-man rotation. Uh, and then what else... Do we need to call up? We are going to have so many difficult decisions to make this offseason just because we have so many players that deserve a 40-man spot. And we just don't have them yet. Like, hi there, Hudson Head. I'm not letting you walk away. I think you have the potential to be a starting left fielder. And it's not your fault that you've been kind of stuck in the high minors. So I'm going to promote you to AAA, first of all. But yeah, there is no way I don't make room on the 40 man for some of these players. Like, I'm just not going to lose him for nothing. I categorically refuse to lose great players for no reason. Um, heck. Do I wave Frazier and promote Hudson Head? Now. No, I don't. Um, I do think another outfielder would be smart. But I'm not mega sold on that. Oh, dear. Oh, buddy. I have been there, Mr. Coke. I have been there. Or Coach or Koch or however that name is pronounced for you specifically. Um, Have you improved at all in Triple A? You really haven't. You should be angry because you suck, dude. Uh, 
I'll just promote him for the sake of promoting him. I don't really have a reason for it, but, you know, it's fine. Alright. End of month. The only thing that could really set us back is if I get fired after this season. And I don't think I will. Because, believe it or not, we have made some improvements to our overall record. Okay, that's not fair, game. I was giving him a chance, and then you injured him. That's not on. Um... Jacob Wallace. Again, he needs a 40-man spot. Uh, you'll be back in a week. Hey, Frazier. Ooh, put him on the 60-day IL. Perfect. That takes him off the 40-man, and then I can call up Jacob Wallace. And he can be a six-starter for a while. Um, nothing here. Okay. All righty. I have an XBH streak. That's pretty exciting. All right, let's take a quick look at our offense this season. It's been decent. I mean, overall, we've been adequate. But there's obviously still something to be unlocked here. There's definitely more to this story. Good. Pagero's actually turned out to be a very lovely asset. He's not an amazing shortstop. So maybe his future is pushing him to second. Maybe we'll have him pick up some second base in spring training. But I do think Cole Tucker is probably done. Um, I I just don't believe in him. And especially when I've got other bats. Like, if you say, Avi, do you want Cole Tucker or Hudson Head? I'm saying Hudson Head every damn day of the week. And then I can nudge Adolfo back to right, or whichever position he feels better at. Adolfo's been great. For a waiver claim, I can't think of what more I could want from him. I can't. He's been super solid. Cole Tucker, not so much. Cole Tucker, not so much. I think he's a useful role player, but I don't think he's a starter. Especially when a guy like Hudson Head doesn't even have a 40-man roster spot yet. So watch out for that. I think he's going to get promoted and play a full season next year. Um, let's look at our prospect pipeline. Really, Tyler Nesbitt is the number one. Noah Smith is only 10th. I am insulted, sir. Insulted. Apparently you think Noah Smith could make the majors this season. I disagree with you, but it's lovely of you to think so. Hudson Ed, I do actually agree with. I think he probably could have made the roster this season. I just overlooked him. Yeah, Noah Smith is a long ways away from starting in the majors. I do think he's earned a promotion at double A. And I don't think he's really far. 
But I do want to let him actually unlock a bit more of his offensive game before I promote him. But I genuinely do believe he's probably quite close to the majors. Closer than I thought, actually. I think I maybe could have played him this season. We'll see. I think Pagero's natural position might better be second base. I think we've got some interesting choices to make this offseason. And I say that every offseason. I always do. I know. But we are not far from being a top-notch team, I don't think. I don't think we're far from making the playoffs. Especially in a season where the Cubs won the division title with 86 wins. Like, we're not talking AL East here. We're talking a relatively weak division. Preacher's movement got better. That's neat. Will grow. Was it? Oh, it's Michael Toglia. Okay. <laughs> I do think Toglia is going to be an interesting choice for us to start at first base, and I'm going to see how he does with a full season next year. Uh, we're actually not quite at the end of the regular season. Looks like we still have a couple games left. <laughs> we're probably going to have to spend a little bit in free agency this year. We're going to have to spend a tiny, tiny bit just for the simple fact that I want to keep my job. We did lose 89 games. Um, I'm sure that's not what the owner wanted. But we're trying to build not just a great team, but a great organization. I want a team that's deep. Uh, that is what I want from my life. Yes, I know the active roster is full. Uh, then you can go to AAA. Okay, fine. Rehab assignment. Aw. I didn't get a... Uh... Okay, the Winnipeg Gold Eyes want you to be their pitching coach. You're an amazing pitching coach. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to give you. This is how much I believe in you, Ray King. Check this out. I'm going to fire Oscar Marine right now. I wasn't going to keep him anyway. I'm going to promote you right up to the major leagues. And then I'm going to give you an extension. I'm hoping that'll be enough to get him to stay. But I did give you a promotion, so hopefully that'll be enough. Oh, looks like Detroit between beat the Twins. I love the fusion. That's such a cool logo. I know the Tigers would never change your name. They're an OG American League franchise, but still. It's pretty good. Except you don't, Stephen Brault. That's the issue. Wow, bro. Um, I'm not saying you're not a good second baseman. I'm saying 18 million is an awful lot to pay for that.
What did you say? Grand slam home run. It can't be a grand slam without being a home run. Ooh, a rematch of 2020, but this year Tampa won. And they swept them too. Suck on that, Dodgers. All right, key fact, I did not get fired. Uh, we are gonna have to replace a couple of those guys. He is worried. He is worried. Really, none of my prospects crack the top 10. I call bullshit on that. Give it time, friendos. Give it time. And I think you will see that my prospects are the best prospects. All right. Um, so let's take a look at, at what worked and what didn't work for this lovely season of Pittsburgh Pirates baseball. Cabrian Hayes, obviously, uh, he always works. He is the heart and soul of this team. And I'm so thrilled. Hey, Tomball, Texas. That's not far from, from where I live. Um, Micah Rodolfo continues to impress. He is a, he's a good all-around hitter. I don't know what much, I don't know what else I could say about him. Uh, Piguero could have had a better rookie season. But it's important to remember he's only 22. And he still has every chance to keep improving uh, over time. I know he wasn't a great shortstop, so that may be something we have to address. Uh, for the first time, Stephen Alameas got to play the whole season, and he hit about as well as I thought and fielded about as well as I thought. Uh, he might well win a gold glove this season, and if so, good for him. Uh, Travis Swaggerty had a pretty okay season when he wasn't hurt. James Outman was a pretty excellent pickup. And especially given how disappointing Cole Tucker was, he may end up being our opening day right fielder. Tucker was fine. Brown was fine. Toglia was okay. And Coke was fine. Uh, Jorge Mateo really stands out as someone that we don't want to bring back. He really did nothing worthy of staying on this team. Heck, I might even just non-tender him or trade him in the offseason. Pitching, how did things go well for Team Us? Well, it went. I really think, you know what we could do? It would be crazy bold if we did this. Because here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing ERAs that are much higher than FIPS. Which seems to, which leads me to believe that I probably didn't have a great defense, which I knew. I knew we weren't going to have an elite level defense. That wasn't the point of last season. And it really doesn't help when one of those players is your freaking shortstop. So, how do we fix that? What do we do to prove that we're going to get better? I don't know the answer to that. I do know that Julian Fernandez was a bit of a bust in the majors, and now that he's been on the, the roster for a full season, I'm kicking his ass right back to AAA so he can figure out what he did wrong, besides everything. Like, it's obviously the walks, right? 
Like, you can't have a strikeout-to-walk ratio of 1 to 1. That's not how this works. But we really need top-flight starters. I think that's what's holding us back. I do think Savali is going to be a very nice starter for us. I think our rotation ranges from acceptable to decent. What we don't have is we don't have... um, We don't have any, like elite starters that look like they're going to get even better. I do think that Priester needs to be given a full season in the major leagues. I think he's more than earned it at this point and I really don't think there's anything he has left to prove. So we're going to sink or swim with Priester next season as our fifth starter. I still would not mind upgrading our rotation if we can. Like if What's his face? If Charlie Morton is available again, I would probably sign him this offseason. But I really think just a year of maturity is going to make a big difference for a lot of these players. Um, Peguero, what do I do with you? What do I do with you? It's a great question. Like, he is a top-notch hitter. And he's just a garbage-tier shortstop. Like... Noah, I need you to get I need you to get yourself right. Cause the instant your bat matures, you're coming to the majors. I think your your timeline has been significantly accelerated by I mean it, it's, it seems unfair to call this a disappointing performance. It's what I expected. But he's 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 just not a good shortstop. He's not. If we take a look at the expanded fielding stats of the easy plays, he didn't make very many of those. And and yeah, his range is really bad. <clears throat> and he doesn't get to plays that other that other shortstop still. So maybe we push him to second, but then that that jars Alameus, which is not it doesn't make me sad if that happens, but um, I do think Cole Tucker's time is done. I think he's been given every opportunity to show that he can succeed on a major league level, and he hasn't. And I really don't think he ever will. I think he's an interesting player, but he's not even a good backup because he can't play any position but right field. Uh, let's end this episode by trying to find a good trade partner for Cole Tucker and move on from him. And I'm actually going to open it up to see if we can get a good player at the right position. I might cash in some chips. Getting a lot of offers for one Mr. Cole Tucker. Mostly relievers, though. Um... I'm not even like excellent relievers. Well, there's some excellent relievers in there. Franklin Kiyome is definitely a borderline starter. Like, if his changeup was anything other than dog shit, I'd probably make him a starter right this minute. I think that would be an excellent return for Cole Tucker. Mmm, gross. No, I'm going to take Kilome without hesitation and see if I can maybe upgrade this deal a bit. Can we get Alexander Ramirez too, please? No, you're close. 
You're definitely close to accepting that deal. What would I have to offer you? Someone genuinely quite good. I'm I'm not I'm not keen on that. Uh, how about a fifth rounder? Really, I can't get you to just instantly say you want the deal. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to offer them. I'm going to ask for a fourth round pick. And we'll see if they take that. I'm not going to sim forward because it's the end of the episode, but that's one of the first things we'll deal with next episode. And we are going to go ahead and fill out our, our coaching staff. So I do need a new bench coach. And we want somebody who is personable, I think is the magic word. Or easygoing. That would also work. Easygoing or personable. He's going to be bad for things. All right, well, let's look at team trainers first. I want the very best trainer I can get my hands on. I really don't care if they get along well with people or not. But maybe there just isn't an excellent trainer here. You're really good at recovery, but you're not good at preventing the injuries in the first place. I'd like to try to find someone who's a bit more... I mean, Matt Miller's great at back injuries and arm injuries, but that's about it. Mike Chavers, maybe? Eh. Manny Arala. I think he's the best choice. He's not great at stopping leg injuries, but everything else he's either amazing at or just quite good. All right, so we have a pending offer there. I do need a new bench coach. Legendary development? Okay, you struggle with personable people. Which is not ideal. Because personable is the most dominant type here. We need someone who does well with personable. Or at least doesn't struggle with it. So even though you're an amazing coach, I think you'd actually hurt the team in a lot of ways. Not John Farrell. Hey, I think we found our man. I think Mike Glenn is perfect. He's exactly what I want. Come to me. Be my bench coach. Because you're going to get along great with everybody. And I know Arala's not going to get along great with everyone, but I also don't care because he's my team trainer. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to find ourselves a new pitching coach for the Rookie League. Uh, 
And how about Michael Joyce here? How would you like to be my pitching coach for rookie ball? There you go. All right. If we get our men, I think this is going to be an excellent staff. I'm really looking forward to Mike Glenn as a um, as a guy. Um, I know he's mostly got average relationships with the players, but we have really good team chemistry, and I like that. I don't want to keep that good chemistry going. I think he's going to be great at developing people and improving them. And that's going to be excellent news. So, um, that is going to conclude this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying and that you will be excited to see double the OTP each week with an episode of this both on Monday and on Friday. And that will continue until that glitch is fixed by Out of the Park Developments, at which point we will consider upgrading to... Um, switching back to where we were before. Until next time, thank you very much for watching the series, and I bid you 